So before we can talk about how we're going to go to the exact area, we need to, to talk about a, no, a new notation here. You, you may have seen this before, and if you have, that's great, and you're, you're a little ahead of the game. Um, this is called the sigma notation. That's what that big symbol in the middle is. It's a capital Greek letter sigma. And what this is saying is, is it, it's got uh, obviously a couple pieces here. It's got K, which is kind of like a counter. And it's got N. N up this number on top is the upper bound for K. This one down here is the lower bound. Everything we're going to look at, there, there's almost always going to be a one there when we start doing the area problems. But theoretically, it, it could be a number other than one. This is the lower bound for K. And this A sub N, that's going to be some kind of formula. All right, so all this is saying is let K go from one to N. K, K is going to be an integer. So it's going to be one, two, three, four up to n, whatever it is, substitute that number into that a sub n formula, right? So what this is saying, is, and then and then add up all of the results. So what this is saying is this is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus so on all the way up to a sub n. Okay, so that, that's very theoretical. Let's look at an example. And let's look at this thing. This is saying that n go from 1 up to 5 and substitute each of those values into this formula. Add up the results. All right, so n is 1. This is 2 times 1 plus 1. When n is 2, it's 2 times 2 plus 1. When n is 3, 2 times 3 plus 1, and I'm going to have to fudge a little to make room, uh, 2 times 4 plus 1, and finally 2 times 5 plus 1. Add all of these together. Let's see what we get. The first one, that's 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11. And if you add all of those up, you get, let's see, 10, 20, 30, 35. And that's the answer. That's what this thing simplifies or, or evaluates to. All right, so let me give you one. Right, go, ahead, go ahead and try this one out and see what you come up with. So let's see. I'm just going to do this one at a time. Right? Start, with, start with letting n be 1. This is negative 1 to the first times 1 squared plus negative 1 squared, whoops, not plus, times 2 squared, plus negative 1 to the third, times 3 squared, plus negative 1 to the fourth, times 4 squared, plus negative 1 to the fifth, times 5 squared, finally, plus negative 1 to the sixth, times 6 squared. So what do we get here? This is negative 1 plus 4 minus 9 plus 16 minus 25 plus 36. And what does this come out to? I don't know. Let's see. That's 3 minus 6, 22 minus 3, 33, I think, is what you'll get. Okay. And what, what I want you to notice here is really is what what effect this negative one to the n had if you want if you want to have a, a series where the terms alternate positive versus negative that's how we're going to do it right it'll be negative one to the n if you want it to start at a negative and think think for a minute suppose i wanted the first term to be positive how could i make that happen All right, well if i did negative one to the n plus one instead then I would have started at negative 1 squared, then negative 1 to the third, and, and I would have gotten alternating positive and then negative. Okay, so how, how about this one? This one is, is a little unusual. There's no n in there. right? There's no n in the formula, well, like there was in the last one, but that's okay. When n is equal to 1, 
the expression is equal to 2. When n is equal to 2, the expression is equal to 2. When n is equal to 3, the expression is still equal to 2, and the result is 6. Okay, so it's okay to even have a situation where there's, you know, there's no variable in the expression. We can still use this notation. So let's say we want to go kind of the other way around. Now I'm, I'm starting off with this expression, with this sum, and I want to come up with um, an expression that's equal to it, but using this, this new sigma notation of ours. What would that look like? Well, as I look at this, I see that I have all even numbers. Now, don't, don't be thrown off by that minus there. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that negative one to the end thing because the signs aren't alternating. Right? The signs aren't alternating. It's just starting at a negative number, then going up to a positive number, and so on. Okay, so let's see. How can I do this? Um, well, I need even numbers, right? And how, how can I say an even number? Well, kind of, kind of flash back to your trigonometry classes, right? When you wanted to say um, multiples of 2 pi, right? You remember how you did that? You, you said 2k pi. So if I want to say an even integer, I would say 2n. So let's do a sum here. Okay, where do I want it to start? Want it to start at negative 2. Well, what does n have to be for that expression to be negative 2? Well, ho hopefully you see that that's going to be negative 1. So that's where I'm going to start. I told you it didn't have to be 0. It have to be 1, right? I'm going to say that n equal negative 1. And that will give me the right starting point. Right? That will start me off at negative 2. Now, where do I need it to end? What value of n makes that expression equal to 12? We can hope, hopefully you see pretty quickly, right? When when n is equal to 6, 2n is 12. So I'm going to let my sum go up to 6. You, you can test this out real quick, right, if, if you need to be convinced. When n is negative 1, this is negative 2. When n is 0, it's 0. When n is 1, it's 2, and so on, right? You, you can see that it, it is giving us the numbers in our series. Okay, so why don't you take a minute to try this one out, right, on your own, see what you come up with, then we'll do it together. So the first thing I want you to notice is that we do have alternating signs here. Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. So I am going to start this out with negative 1 to the n. All right, and then that kind of locks me in now a little bit, right, when I do my sum, n is n is going to have to start at an odd number because I need that first term to be negative. And for that to happen, for, for the for the negative one to the n to become an odd to become negative, n has to be odd. All right, now how about the other numbers? One, three, five, seven. I'm seeing odd numbers in there. Again, if you flash back to the trigonometry class, right? How do we how do we say odd numbers? Well, odd numbers are two to the n plus 1. Okay, now, let's see. How's, how's this going to work? So I think I'm about to run into a little, a little trouble. If I let n start at 1, then what, what do I get for my first number? Well, that, that doesn't give me 1, right? If I put 1 in here for n, I get 3. Okay, so that ain't working. I'm not, I'm not starting at the right place. Okay, well, how, how about if I just back this off 1? Right, how about if I start at 0? Okay, if I start at 0, now, now it works. Now uh, 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1, and that's where I needed it to start. But look at what happens. And this is the problem you run into when you're doing this, right? You change one thing and it messes up something else. Now my exponents aren't working. Because now that exponent is going to be negative 1 to the 0, which is positive 1. And I needed it to be negative. But look, this, this is easy to fix. Just make this n plus 1. All right now, let, now let's try it out. I think that's going to do it. So let, let's put some numbers in. If I put 0 in, this is negative 1 to the 0 plus 1 times 2 times 0 plus 1, which is negative 1. Excellent. That worked. How about 2? 
if I put two in, this is, uh, excuse me, so what if I put one in, right, the next number? Um, negative one to the one plus one, two times one plus one. Let's see, that negative, that negative one is positive now, and this is three. Yes, excellent, that's working. Okay, how do I know when to stop? When, when does two n plus one equal 15? Well, if you if you have to just just make an equation, two n plus one equals fifteen, two n equals fourteen, n equals seven. There you go. That's where I'm going to stop. Okay. We have some rules, and I I know it looks like a hot mess, but look, this is all actually actually pretty straightforward. It's writing out things you already know using this sigma notation. This first one here, for example. This is just the distributive property, right? Look, look at the right-hand side, right? This is C times A sub one plus A sub two plus out to A sub N. Now distribute, if you move that C into the parentheses, C A sub one plus C A sub two plus out to C A sub N, but that's just this. Right, add up C A sub I, A sub K, and you get the left hand side. The right, uh, the second one here, this is just the commutative property. Right, look, th this, uh, look at this first part. I'm actually going to start with the left hand side here. This is saying A sub 1 plus B sub 1 plus A sub 2 plus B sub 2 up to A sub N plus B sub M, but look, rearrange. Use the commutative property. Put the A's together, A sub one, A sub two, up to A sub N, and put the B's together, B sub one, B sub two, up to B sub N. This is this part, and this is this part. Right, this is just taking things you already know and, and kind of rewriting them using this sigma notation. This last one, remember when I saw, when we did, it was the sum, uh, there was no K, sum of, I think it was 2K equals 1 to 3. You remember what that came out to? It was 2 plus 2 plus 2. But look, think back to like third grade math, right? This is 3 times 2, which is 6. That's all this is saying, right? This 2 was the C, and 3 is the N, right? Just kind of technical ways of saying things of, of properties that we're already familiar with. Now, one last thing. We, we've got some formulas, right? And these are things I, I don't really expect people to remember, except maybe the first one, um, unless for some reason you're working with these a lot. So, but write them down. Put them on an index card. We are going to use these. Uh, in, in the next lecture when we talk about finding the exact values of the area under curves. But look, what, what, what is this? The sum, look, look at this sum here, the sum k equals 1 to n of k. What is this? Well, k equals 1, then 2, then 3, up to n. So this is just a formula for the sum of the first n integers. Uh, first n natural numbers. And look at what this one is doing. This is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared up to n squared. So this is just a formula for the sum of the first n squares. And this last one here, this is the same thing with cubes. 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed up to n cubed. Okay, I don't expect you to actually do these with numbers. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to ask you what the sum of the first 50 squares is. Let's substitute numbers into the formula. You really shouldn't have a have a hard time doing that. We're going to use these really as formulas in the next section. Speaking of which, that's that's where we are, right? Um, where are we going next? Well, it, next we're going to take this concept of uh, the sigma notation, and we're going to use those formulas. And we're going to see how we can use them to come up with methods for finding the exact area under a curve.